Welcome back to Mad Camp for Jewelry. In this video we'll discuss another 5-axis continuous operation that's quite different from uh, one that's determined by drive surfaces. The operation is called Swarf and it's meant for cutting surfaces with the side of the bit as opposed to its tip. This can save you considerable amounts of time when milling your models because obviously you have a potentially much greater surface with which to cut and can also be very useful for cutting straight surfaces in a very short period of time. The most practical and common operation uh, applied to jewelry is the cutting of the inside of the ring and on traditional approaches for example with the four axis mills and software such as RhinoCam, you would do this by cutting out the center hole well, either by hand or by cutting out this entire area in an index fashion. Well, with 5-axis options and specifically with MadCam, you have another alternative that's much faster. So let's say we have this ring model already with a support. We've selected it, we selected our tool cutter, and we have positioned it, oh, in this case incorrectly, so let's correct that um, by rotating it to a proper position. That's why it's important to always check your cut simulator. There we are. Now, the C planes in this case do not matter because. 5-axis operations do not take their cues from seaplanes, but it, they are useful for your viewing of the model. So, to cut this particular model, we can approach it one of two ways. We can either use the actual boundaries of the ring, the edges of the ring, or we can use um, an artificially created uh, cylinder that represents the inside of the string. I'll show you how to do both. So, first let's use the actual edge boundary of this ring. We go to our 5 extra tab once we've selected and positioned our model, and then we go to our 5x curve milling toolbar and select Swarf Profiling. Click that and then select our edge curves. Before you select any edge curve, think about how your bit will be positioned and what it will do. If we select this edge, it will only cut at the very surface of the string. What we want to do instead is to plunge all the way down to this surface, this edge, and then cut it, and in doing so, cut out this entire area. This is once again why it's useful to look at all the other windows as we're making that selection. So we click on this edge, and we can see in all of our windows, it's asking us for which direction we want, either this or this. In this case, we want the arrows to be pointing up, because we will have our bit coming from this direction. If we choose the other one, our bit will come from the side and do some pretty crazy calculations. So make sure you're pointing in the direction of your bit. Here we go click enter to confirm and you will get this visual overlay of the bit which is used to determine two things. First of all, as we move around it will determine our starting position and the direction. As you can see the arrow currently pointing left and now it's pointing to the right. This will determine the travel path, meaning it will either go this way, clockwise, or if it's pointing left, counterclockwise. That's a personal choice, perhaps dependent on um, which we will cut cleaner. And second, as you can see, as I move my cursor around, the bit tilts in or out. Obviously, in this case, because we're using a tapered bit, and because we want these walls to be straight, we want to make sure it's leaning slightly towards us. So that way, it's making an exact vertical wall with its slanted angle. So 
confirm that you have exactly what you want. There we go. This is the configuration we want both in our profile on the side and in I'll just fix that again. And in our window on the top here. Once we're happy with the way it looks, it's a little tricky sometimes to get exactly the right thing. We can click with our left mouse button and we're presented with our 5 axis profiling window. Stock to leave is obvious. The second um, aspect is important to consider though. Top, bottom, and stop downs can allow you to create um, multi cut as opposed to one cut. If you leave this at default, meaning top level, bottom level at zero, and step down at whatever, the bit will come right down and make one single cut. This might be acceptable, or you might wish to choose to change the stop level to a little higher and then gradually step down until you make that final cut. Let's see how this will look. So we will initially leave these options as they are and you will see that there's a single entry point and a single cut. We can simulate this. And here we see our 5 axis simultaneous operation by the movement of all axes at the same time. Now let's recreate or recalculate this path and now specify a top level of 1, bottom level of negative 0.5, and a step down size of 0.5 and see how this changes. Now you can see that our initial cut is about a millimeter away from the bottom, above the bottom and the bottom extends a little bit below the model. This approach is often preferable because for one it assures that you get a clean cut by repeating it several times in slight increments and also goes a little bit beyond your model to ensure that any leftover stock is cut off. A repetition of, in this case, four times will certainly leave a very clean cut with no wax hanging around the edges. Now let's talk about the other approach. Let's say you have an edge that's not completely circular or closed, or perhaps there's some other interruption in the way, and instead you want to use basically the ring gauge this inner size um, as your profile, swarf profiling surface or edge. In this case you would obtain your inner ring and to do so you would use a command such as extract isocurve as I did here. So here is our ISO curve. And then create, make a little surface out of this by using extrude curve, making sure the solid is turned off, both sides is turned on, and extending it just a little bit. This will be sufficient. In this case, it doesn't really matter which direction we're facing, so. Right now it's following the direction of our ring, meaning that this is the back face and out to the surface is the front face. Now, this should still represent the cylinder of our ring, the inside of the ring, and we can use the edges of this extrusion as our guides for the swarf operation. So, click 5-axis swarf profiling, select one of these edges, press enter, and repeat as before, looking in both the side view and the perspective view or the top view to make sure that we are positioning our tool exactly as we want it to. So in this case, 
here is the correct position. You can see it correctly both on the side view and the top view. Click OK. Um, in this case, I'm going to just create a little bit of an extra on the bottom. And you'll see that I created two paths, one exactly at that edge and one a little bit below to be a bit of a safety catch. And there's our tool path. First cut, second cut. As you imagine, this has only cut through half of the ring, so we will need to mirror this tool path to do a full cut. We can use this using our trusty mirror toolpath script, selecting our entry point and reflecting it over our z-axis. Now you can see our two toolpaths, and if you run the simulator, you will see them both cut. Here's one with a double line, flip with the other line. We don't need to be concerned about that strange transition. The transitions in the simulator are not always correct. As long as you specify enough of a height in your post processor to return to, you will not uh, actually cut through your model. In case you're wondering where that option is, it's in your post processor, which will be discussed in a separate video. But um, to quickly show you, you go to post processing and specify your home position to something like Z50. That will ensure that between every toolpath, your bit is raised quite high up. This covers the SWARF operations, and I hope you found them useful. Thanks for watching.